All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this show started. You guys ready? Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring this first comic up. He's very tall. He's very good looking. Very charming. People really enjoy him. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, Mr. Michael Avila Jr. <laughs> Yes. How are you guys doing? I'm pretty sure that's the first time that a comic ever teleported to the fucking stage. So. Uh, glad to be here tonight, guys. Had to make sure that I stayed sober all day so that I could be here. That's not a joke. That's serious. My family knows that's true. <laughs> I got offered weed all day long and just had to pass on it. Well, I mean, a, a couple times I passed on it, a couple of times I smoked it, so. That was earlier, though, you know. Uh, so I'm from New Mexico. When people ask me what I am now, I generally tell them that I'm uh, half white, half New Mexican. Because um, I think that it sounds better than old Mexican. Um, uh, New Mexico doesn't have very good weed, guys. The weed is fucking horrible. It doesn't have a name. I got to California. Found out weed has names here. You guys smoke weed? Some cops here, it's okay. It's all right. Some guilty ass faces. I did a couple of times. It made me paranoid. I don't smoke it anymore. Uh, so I got to California, man, and I started, uh, I was like, dispensary? What? Weed store? Great. And so the very first one that I ever tried was uh, really, really good, man. It was called George W. Bush Kush. Man, it was good. Super high. Made me fucking stupid, though. Um, started mispronouncing shit. Um, I'm usually very well spoken. I was like choking on my snacks and shit, like I had pretzels and I'm getting caught in my throat. Uh, I stopped smoking that one because of the whole choking hazard thing. That and I don't like to be dumb. And so I started smoking some uh, some Obama Kush. You guys ever try that Obama Kush? Obama Kush is great, man. You smoke that. Gets you really, really high. The only problem that I find with that is that when I smoke the Obama Kush, everybody blames me for everything. <laughs> Shit, that's not even my fault. But really, though, you gotta pay attention to what you're smoking, man. The names are very important. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I tried this weed called PCP. <laughs> that shit was bad. <laughs> like, I felt all wet. I think it was laced. Might have been laced, guys. But really, like, my friend hit me up the other day. He's like, hey, Mike, I'm on the way to your house right now. I'm smoking a blunt. I'm like, nice. What do you got? And he's like, oh, it's that fucking Amelia Earhart. He just never showed up at my house. He just never showed up anywhere. I don't even think he thought it existed. I don't really know. You, you really gotta, you gotta pay attention, though, and you gotta be careful because, you know, a lot of people will tell you, like, oh, marijuana, weed, it's a gateway drug. And it can be. Because um, one time I was smoking this uh, Bobby Brown, and it led me to this Whitney Houston, which ended up just being crack. So I spent some time being addicted to crack. It's not good. It's not a joke. That's life lessons, you know? Uh, so, I just recently started dating a girl that has a three year old. That's where we're going to go for marijuana. We're going to talk about children now, because that seems like a good day. Uh, Good transition. So I just started dating a girl recently and she has a three-year-old and so it's really interesting because I'll be talking to her on the phone and I don't know when she's talking to her son or when she's talking to me. It makes for some very awkward moments. Uh, I'll be talking to her on the phone and she'll be like, oh, you're a bad boy. I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, not you, Mike. Oh, okay. She'll be like, oh, just take your pants off. I'll be like, all right, this is... Kinky, all right. And not you. It's like, I don't think we should be together anymore. Like, Fuck, I hope she's talking to him. I hope she's talking to him. No, no, she's talking to me. She's talking to me. I love that uh, beginning part in the relationship, man. That honeymoon period is great for me. That's Hang on to that shit for as long as you can, guys. Because once that's gone, then you just hate them. So. <laughs> But the honeymoon period is great, man. That's like uh, in the very beginning when you get like a blowjob and a sandwich for no reason. You know? 
Or like maybe it's like a cultural thing, like maybe you get like a burrito and a hand job. Like some chicken and reach around. I don't know. All cultures are different, so. But uh, I really do love that. Uh, it's just crazy because I'm 30 now, so dating in your 30s is, is quite different. Um, I like to compare it to uh, shopping for a car in a used car lot. It's the way that I look at it, it's kind of a used car lot. I'd like to have a brand new car, but really I just can't afford it. <laughs> oh, you're really pretty, I can't afford that. So how old are you, 22? Yeah, fuck that. No. Mm -mm. But, uh... Damn, just started getting depressed and shit. You never want to see a comic get depressed about his life while he's up there telling you about it. That's... But really, you gotta ask those questions, you know? It'd be nice if women had car facts. And I guess for women, it would be nice if men came with the car facts also, right? That way you know what you're getting. I'd like to know how many miles she has on her. That's important, you know? Has she ever been rear-ended, things like that? You know, if so, how many times? Stuff like that is important to me, so, you know? I tell you what, ladies, I'm gonna give you some advice, and this will help out your future relationships with men, and maybe you actually can be friends with them whenever you break up with them, but if you ever break up with a dude, do me this favor, okay? When you break up with a dude, tell him it's because his penis is too large. You guys can still be friends after that. I wouldn't even be mad. Lie to me if you have to. I wouldn't even be upset. Look, Mike, I like you a lot, but frankly, your penis is just too huge. It's starting to cause some medical concern. I don't think we should be together anymore. All right, that's fine. I can understand that. I can understand that. Just make sure you tell your friends why we broke up, though. Make sure they know. You hope there's that one friend in there that's like, how big? There usually is. There usually is that one friend. I'm dating that girl now, I'm dating that girl. So. She likes a challenge. <laughs> oh man, you guys believe in ghosts? People that I can hardly see? Yeah, you guys believe in ghosts? I do believe in ghosts. I don't know if I always did, but I believe in ghosts now because my fucking house is haunted, man. I'm not just saying that like it's truly, truly haunted. Or at least that's what you tell people the next day when they wake up. It's like, you should probably go. Your fucking house is haunted. No, I'll, I'll mail your stuff to you. It's cool. Just get out of here quick. The only thing that worries me about that is uh, probably a few years ago, my grandmother died. I love my grandma a lot. And uh, people always told me, you know what, Mike? Your grandma's always watching you. <sighs> I do a lot of really weird fucked up shit, guys. So I hope that... Uh, Grandma's not always watching me, and I hope that maybe sometimes she doesn't watch with somebody else. Like, I just have this image of my grandmother, like, floating in my room, going, Michael, stop masturbating all the time. You guys think it's racist if you only jack off with white socks? I'm just afraid, like, once I go black sock, I won't go back. And I have a lot more white socks than I do of any other color, so, you know. <sighs> oh, good times. Seriously, though, about the penis thing, ladies, make sure that you do that, okay? If you learned anything from me here today, it's just break up with somebody that way. They'll respect you for it. Oh, I talk to myself. You guys talk to yourselves? Yep. Some of you guys just said that shit to yourself. <laughs> shit, he's on to me. <laughs> the fucked up part is I talk to myself so often now that um, to not seem like a weirdo, I have to pretend that I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> like I have headphones in, but I'm not actually listening to shit. <laughs> Same thing when I'm in my car, I'm talking to myself. I try to pretend there's like a kid in the back seat and shit. <laughs> Damn it, I'm gonna be late. I got 15 minutes, shit, I gotta get to work. You want a happy meal? Is that, yeah. What the fuck are you looking at? I got people in here, okay? For real though, man. I, sometimes I don't even notice it. Like I'll be at Walmart or something, I'll be walking down like the cereal aisle, and I'll be like, what kind of cereal am I gonna get? <laughs> fuck yeah, Apple Jacks are on sale. Start talking to people that are walking by and shit. Hey buddy, see that shit? Apple Jacks? It's good, right? 
<laughs> I'm that guy. The guy that you go, why the fuck is this guy talking to me? I don't know this guy is. The line is long, he's making it a little more uncomfortable. I wish I could just fucking stand here quietly. I'm that guy. I'm that guy that's like, oh, what do you got? Potato bread? Oh, potato bread's good. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm a weirdo, I guess that's what I, yeah, that's say it for you. You ever think back to when you were a kid and then you remember how much, even like a bigger weirdo you were when you were a kid? No. See, when people don't laugh, I just assume that you're still a fucking weirdo. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I was a kid, I was actually quite normal. I got older, started drinking, started doing drugs, became a weirdo. Before I get out of here, man, I'm gonna give you guys some, some advice. Just full of advice today, I guess. It's like, that's what we're doing here. Very Dr. Phil today. Um, if you don't meet these two criteria, do not send a picture of your dick to somebody. Pay attention to this. Two parts of criteria to this. If you don't meet both of them, don't send it. One, have a large penis. If you don't have a large penis, don't send a picture of it. Second part of that, do they actually want to see your penis? <laughs> see, that's the problem because now it's gotten a bad rap these days. Women get sent pics apparently all the time. They're very unwarranted. And uh, as guys, we don't understand that because we would never be like that. We'd be like, what? Random titties? Come on now. I hardly know you. That would just make us like you more. Hey, I just got the picture of your ass that you sent me. Uh, that was unacceptable. Please do not do that again. Uh, it was unwarranted. But seriously, guys, if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't have those two pieces of criteria, don't send it. It's not going to work out well for you. Because this is what it comes down to. After you break up with somebody and they have those pictures, you want to be able to have the mentality of, like, she might show them to people. I hope she shows them to people. Don't be that person, like, why did I send her it? It was little, I didn't even get it hard if I sent it to her. Never do that shit. Ever. Ever do that. There's only one time that they can see your stuff soft, and that's after they've already seen it hard a few times. Then you can do that. That's that comfortability shit. That's where you walk like, I'm gonna go take a shower, and he's just scared turtle. That's okay, because she knows who he turns into. If she knows that you turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's okay if she sees you looking all Danny DeVito. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, we're gonna keep this show rolling, guys. Uh, I'm Michael Lava Jr. Hope that you had a good time. I'm gonna bring the next comic up here. <laughs>